Though it is surrounded on all sides by Detroit, Highland Park is its own separate city. So too, like Detroit, its population exploded with the automotive industry. Construction of a new 1,000 people high school was finished in 1915, but just one year later, it already had exceeded its capacity. Here's a school admittance policy. First hour begins, so they wouldn't you wouldn't be able to let in the building. And then when your lunch hour, if you didn't come back, so if you were late, wouldn't be let in. Except for Mr. Jackson's class, he got special privileges, I guess. So what the hell was the point of the diamond? Like, why was this randomly here? So yeah, it did light up. Yeah, apparently there was supposed to be like a switch on where you could turn it on. So yeah. it's like some sort of artistic. Somebody wired it up and then wrapped it and then tightened it on there with some um, zip ties. It's really cool though. It's yeah. Like you had to really spend some time in here doing that. In 1917, a second building was built next door, intended to be a separate girls' high school as well as an additional section for a junior college program. Just a few years later, the buildings were connected to become co-ed, and over the following two decades, more wings would be added and roughly 3,000 students were in attendance. Meanwhile, the junior college's enrollment would also boom post-World War II, with soldiers returning and pursuing their education with the GI Bill. The college took over the entire complex in 1977, when a newer high school was built elsewhere. Some old um, pendant flags. They're old pendants. Oh my god, that's cool. Highland Park Community College flag. This is a very small classroom. Very tiny. Little teacher's desk over there. This covered atrium section was the original gym. Just as the building was transitioning to community college, several students set a pile of wrestling mats on fire as a joke, but accidentally started a blaze that would collapse the entire roof. Rather than spend over half a million dollars to repair it, and since they already had a second gym, the area was converted into the large open concourse seen here, being finally completed in 1985. The college would hold concerts, events, and art galleries in this area. Just three random mannequin heads up there. That's very random and creepy. Seems like it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's like a water pipe. Oh, you know what? There's the pool down there. Okay, that's the pool in there. It's the old elevator. All the glass is smashed out. You could go up and down there. Yeah, those are some old... This was like, wait, isn't that like pitch black in the auditorium? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. That's where I thought I heard somebody here. There's like two levels to it. They offered a number of vocational courses such as nursing, mechanics, robotics, dentistry, and more. This is the auditorium in the original section of the school. It can hold 1,100 students and has been left largely originally as built, minus some slight renovations in the 1930s. Here's an old pamphlet. Though you can never tell now, many of the walls above the lockers and in the stairwells were painted with beautiful African-American murals by art students in the 1970s as an effort to hide some of the disrepair that had already begun in the building. 
With its closure, an effort to save the murals was started, but ultimately unsuccessful. The fact that the entire school would be painted celebrating African American tradition is all the more interesting considering that just a few years prior in 1969 and 1970, its black students had several sit-in strikes to protest a predominantly white administration teaching the predominantly African American student base, which at that time was almost 4,000. The protests proved successful, and in 1972, a new president had been elected and was quoted saying HPCC was a strong, viable black school. Just very small classrooms. Like, what is that? It's 25 desks tops? Here's an old Meep book. Some of the most famous alumni from the college include former Detroit School Superintendent Arthur Jefferson, Ford Motor Company Vice President Elliot Hall, NBA player Terry Durab, Olympic swimmer Taylor Drysdale, and State Senator Martha G. Scott. It's a spiral staircase, that's sick. I wonder if it just leads down into like tunnels, it sort of looks like. That's pretty dope. I saw one of those somewhere else and they were like labeled with the like, person's name on the back of it. Well, not that one, but... It's pretty deep. There's a bunch of junk thrown in it. Pools always smell nasty. Dude, there's always a smell to a pool. You just know when you're near it. Is this a little... Uh, no, I thought that was like a sauna. Ooh, this is maintenance back here. Their basketball team, the Highland Park Panthers, were ranked as number one best small school team in the entire country in 1985 after a winning streak of 25 consecutive games. At that same time, their female team, the Lady Panthers, were doing just as well with a 22 winning streak, despite their coach being shot to death the previous year. That decade saw attendance still strong at around 3,000 students, but even this good news was not enough. By the end of that decade, the school's budget deficit was at almost one and a half million dollars. To save money, the school cut its respiratory therapy and nursing courses, which angered those students and resulted in another sit-in strike that lasted four days until the courses were reinstated. Here's a little more open of a classroom. Well, that's a very helpful sticker. It's labeled door. Okay. I am not quite sure. Why is everything everything is labeled? Like door, storage unit. Um I guess maybe this was a younger children's section or something, because the other says bulletin board. So like it's all just labeled out for I guess learning something. Old library sign, but it's not the library. This is like a little teacher's lounge. Is this like dog tunnels? Yeah, that's yeah. what it looks like. Abandoned dreams. Is that somebody outside? Into the 90s, the college went downhill, and after missing two regular audits by the state, an investigation was launched, and the school was found to be the worst community college in the state. Government funding was cut early 1995. The school managed to operate for the rest of the year until running out of cash and closed permanently in December that year. Sadly, many students abandoned their degrees when their college closed, despite other nearby community colleges attempting to help them out. I think this must have been like some part of the beauty school or something with all the... Here's like cuticle removal, cuticle oil. So this must have been part of the yeah. salon area. Yep. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, they have all these inspirational. The building reopened as the Highland Park Career Academy that operated as an alternative high school and vocational training school that still offered nursing, dentistry, and mechanic courses. There's a blood 
transfusion thing. So this must have been yeah, some sort of medical teaching center. It's probably, it's probably the hospital wing of the medical Pressure center. monitoring. Some butane oil. Cali low calibration gas carbon dioxide. Little plastic syringes. Nice Machine shop, I guess. Yeah, the orange thing. It's like a huge robotic arm. Kind of so they could learn stuff for factory work, and then this is some sort of thing right here. I think they used to have a car shop here. I think that's okay. As things got worse for the city in the new millennium, by 2006 almost half of the over 3,000 students enrolled in Highland Park school system did not actually live in the city and were noted as being mostly students with disciplinary, academic, or personal problems. By 2012, the enrollment had dropped to just 1,000 and the school district was placed in a state of financial emergency when it was found that the president of the school board had embezzled almost $200,000 from the school system. Meanwhile, the Career Academy was shut down in 2009 in an effort to alleviate its massive deficit. In 2012, the new emergency manager found the still open three school buildings to be in a state of such disrepair that he decided to consolidate them into a singular building large enough to house them all. That led them to look at the community college building. In the three years it had been closed, it was maintained and had security. But unfortunately, with the state takeover, the building had been left unprotected from scrappers and vandals, and it was decided it would cost more to repair than leave the other three schools open. What kind of room is this? It just leads down. Oh, it's a, it's a wheelchair lift. But it's super short. Dude, that is... That's a vibrator. That is a vibrator. <laughs> Why? <laughs> it's a vibrator. Yeah. Look at this sign. When you drip bodily fluids, like, ugh, what? The building was next purchased by Galapagos, an art foundation accredited with revitalizing the New York art scene and was looking to do the same for Detroit. They announced that their main space would be Highland Park Community College and gave an optimistic opening date of two years time in 2014. As of 2019, they were still seeking funding for Phase 1 for this building along with nearby George Ferris School. In May 2022, the school auditorium was the victim of arson just months after Ferris School was demolished. Does the same fate lie in store for Highland Park Community College?